Hi everyone, so in today's quick tip video I'm going to show you how you can name and hide layers in the Canvas workspace for computer program. So I've just clicked on my Canvas workspace icon which I keep in my taskbar window on my Mac. So I'm not using the online version and this is how it opens up. So I'm just going to close down the Canvas project window and then I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. So one of the beauties of using the Canvas workspace for computer, apart from the fact that you can use your own fonts as we've discussed before and you can use positioning with XY coordinates, you can use layers which you can't do in the online version. So let me just grab a few shapes. So I'm just going to grab a few shapes and put them onto this working mat. I'll just size that one down a little bit. And then I'll just do some text. I'll just type hello. Okay, so I've got three different shapes on here. Now these could be three elements of a card that you're making, you know, a base card and some matting layers or a base card, a matting layer and some words, whatever you want. I'm just showing you, just, you know, giving you the idea of how this works. So I've got three shapes on this mat. Now, over on the right hand side is the properties box for the downloadable version. And if you come down to this fourth icon down on the right and hover over it, it says layers. So if I click on to the layers tab, it will now show me the three shapes that I've got on my mat. And it puts them on to the layers panel in reverse order. So the first shape I put on my mat was this like postage stamp shape and that's here at the bottom. The second shape I put onto my mat was the border and there's the border and the third shape or text that I put onto my mat was the word hello and that's there. Now the reason that this one is in blue highlighted that's because this is what's selected on my mat. So if you look at the one at the top here that says text and I click on the text that will now highlight that layer. So if you're working with lots of layers, it's easy to be able to see which one you've actually got selected. So if you're struggling, let's say you're making a base card and you put a dashed fold line down the middle, the dashed lines are not always easy to grab a hold of. So you could come down here into your layers panel, look for your dash line, select it, and it would highlight it here on your map and vice versa. You know, you can click a shape here and highlight it here. Okay, so that's the first thing. You can bring shapes on, it brings them into the layer palette in kind of like reverse order, so from bottom to the top in the way that you brought them onto your mat. But then you'll also see that there's a little eye next to each of these layers. So that means that I can if I've got lots of shapes on my mat and they're getting in the way, rather than keep dragging them out of the way and then, you know, working with, you know, altering and adjusting and that kind of thing, I can leave them all on the mat but hide elements so that I can work with them. So let's say I want to work with the word hello. And I want to hide the square and the border. I come over here to the border and I click on the eye icon next to that shape and it's instantly gone. Now it's not been deleted, it's still there. When you drag an imaginary box around it, you can't select it. So it's not going to get in the way of while you're working on your map. You've just hidden it. So let's say I want to hide the border. So I've not got anything selected now, but I can see the borders here. So you, as I say, you can do it either way and I'll click the eye and the minute I click the eye, this will disappear. So now I've just got my word hello. So, you know, if I wanted to say 
manipulate this and, you know, do anything with it. Or, you know, I wanted to weld something else to it and I had lots of shapes on my mat. It's a way of being able to isolate part of your design temporarily. Now, again, if you're working with lots of shapes and you don't want to save them all onto one mat, so if I just put the eyes back on onto these shapes now. So let's just say, you know, I've made this design and I want to save it, but I've got a lot of elements on my mat and I don't want to save them all on one mat or I don't want to send them all over to my machine in one go. So you can hide them. So I'm going to click the square just to highlight it to make it easy for me to see and turn it off. I'm going to click the border and I can see which one it is and turn it off. Now from here, all as I've got showing on this mat is this word. If I go to file and transfer file via the internet, it's going to come up with a warning and it says to me, the objects that have been set as hidden are not available to export or transfer. Well, that's fine because I don't want to. So I'm going to say, okay. And then it says to me, the registered machine is ready to download the transferred file from the internet. Okay, that's what I want to do. So if I switch my scan and cut machine on now and wait for the Wi-Fi icon to turn blue, once the icon has turned blue, that means that the files are over there ready to be received. So I can then go to retrieve data on my machine and pick up this word hello and then I can save it into the machine on its own if I want to. So then let's say I want to send the border over individually. So I come back over here, switch the eye on for the border and turn the eye off for the word hello. And now I've just got the border and I can do the same thing. File, transfer the file. You'll always get this message. It's just reminding you that you've got items hidden because sometimes you can have a lot of designs on a mat and some, you know, there'll be varying sizes and something might be, might be small and you've hidden it and you completely forget all about it. So it's actually reminding you that you've got hidden items. So again, I'll say OK, and then again, it's telling me that the machine is ready to receive this file, and I say OK. So then, when I go back to my scan and cut, and go to the home button, and then go to retrieve data, this element will be here, ready for me to save on a separate mat in my machine. And that's as simple as it is. So if I put the eyes back on, everything comes on the mat together. Obviously, if if I want to send this whole mat as it is, I would just make sure that everything is showing in the layers panel. Go to file, go to transfer via internet, and this time you can see I'm not getting the message saying anything's hidden because nothing is hidden. They're all here on my mat. And then I click OK and I can send all that over to the machine. And when I go to retrieve data, this will all come through on one mat. So you've got options. Okay. So now, did you know that you can also name your layers? I'm going to select the word hello, and I'm going to come over here where it says text, because that's the layer that I've got selected. And then I'm going to click twice, and a box opens. So this word text is now highlighted. So I can type hello and hit enter on my keyboard. I can choose the border and it just says shape because that's all it knows it has. I can double click and I can type border and hit enter. And then I can come to the other word and select it and then click again. And I can type shape square. So I can identify each of my layers. And again, if you're working with lots of layers, especially if you've got lots of text. So let's say if I go back to the text icon and I type birthday and hit enter, by default, it will just show up here as text. And if I just change 
the hello back to the word text as it would appear in capitals. Sometimes you can't always see what the text reads. I can clearly see that this says hello, but from where I'm sitting looking at my screen, I can't tell that that says birthday. So if I had lots of text on my screen, I wouldn't know which layer was which. So it's handy. So you click once and then click again. It will expose the text box and I can now just type birthday. And again, I can come to the, the hello word that's just showing as text and I can rename it. And it just makes everything easier to deal with. So I hope you've enjoyed learning how to hide and unhide layers and how to name layers. Please leave me any questions or comments below underneath the YouTube video. Please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you've got the bell notification icon turned on. Anyway, thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.